Hey, what's up? It's Anthony. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to play some common lo-fi chord progressions, as well as get a great lo-fi sound in your DAW. Let's get started. I'm just playing some of my favorite chord progressions over this lo-fi hip-hop beat. The more you start to get into lo-fi hip-hop, the more that you'll notice that a lot of these chords and harmonies are borrowed from jazz and soul music. The beat I'm playing over, I quickly threw together using some samples from Lander. Check out the description. I'll link all the samples there so you can get them for yourself. The first progression I was playing was A minor 7, B7 sharp 5, and E minor 9. So the A minor 7, I'm going to play the 5th fret of the E string with my 2nd finger. And then I'm borrowing strings D, G, and B on the 5th fret with my 3rd finger. There are other ways to play this, like you can go like this with all your fingers on the 5th fret, but I like to bar it. I find it easier, it might take you a bit of getting used to. The 2nd chord is B7 sharp 5. I'm playing the 7th fret of the E string with my 1st finger, the 7th fret of the D string with my 2nd finger, and then fret 8 on strings G and B with my 3rd and 4th fingers. And then the last chord is E minor 9. I'm playing the 7th fret of the A string with my 2nd finger, the 5th fret of the D string with my 1st finger, and then on strings G and B I'm playing the 7th fret with my 3rd and 4th fingers. And then you can grab that low E string if you want that nice bass sound. If you're just starting to learn guitar, this is a great progression to start with without getting too overwhelmed. It has a lot of those common shapes that you'll find when you start learning about seventh chords and you dig more into this genre. So this next chord progression has a lot of the same shapes as the first chord progression. I'll just be shifting them around the neck, which is gonna be transposing them. So instead of A minor seven, I'm gonna be going to F minor seven. And it's the same, I have my second finger on the first fret of the E string. I have my third finger barring the first fret of strings D, G, and B. And that's F minor 7. The next chord is G7 sharp 5, which is a lot like B7 sharp 5. It's the same shape, I'm just moving it down to the third fret. So first finger on the third fret of the E string, second finger on the third fret of the D string, and then on strings G and B I have my third and fourth fingers on fret 4. So, so far I have F minor 7, G7 sharp 5, and then I have C minor 9. And that's a lot like E minor 9. But I'm shifting everything down to the 3rd fret. So 2nd finger on the 3rd fret of the A string, 1st finger on the 1st fret of the D string, and then on strings G and B I have my fingers 3 and 4 on fret 3. And then we have one more new chord that kind of turns around back to the first chord and that's C9 sus. And that's just barring the third fret. It sounds complicated, but you're just barring the third fret with your first finger and you're playing the strings A to B. So A, D, G, B. So this is what the chord progression sounds like over the beat. The whole world sounds just like that. So this next one is my favorite chord progression and you'll hear why right now. It's B flat major seven to G minor nine to E flat major seven to E flat minor seven. And it's that minor change that gives it that really nice nostalgic feel. So let's get into this one. The first chord is B flat major seven. And we have our first finger on the sixth fret of the E string. I have my fingers three and four on the D and G strings on the seventh fret. And then I have my second finger on the sixth fret of the B. So I'm skipping this A. So you wanna kind of mute that or else it's gonna sound like this. It's right, but it doesn't sound that great. The next chord is G minor nine. And it's that same shape from the last two chord progressions, just moved up to fret 10. The next chord is E flat major seven. So I have my first finger on fret six of the A string, and then I have my third finger on fret eight of the D string. My second finger's on fret seven, and my 
fourth finger is on fret eight of the B string. And you can bar this one if you'd like and get that high E string there. Now the minor change is really easy. We keep these fingers on and I let go of the pinky and I just shift this second finger down one string. You have to bar this chord or else it sounds like this. Yeah, you, gotta, you have to bar this one. Low fi So now that you know how to play a few of the most common lo-fi chord progressions, I'm gonna show you how to get a great lo-fi sound in your DAW with just a few free plugins. All the plugins I'll be using are free or native to Ableton Live. I'll link them down in the description below, so go download them and follow along. And if you're looking for even more lo-fi plugins, check out this video right here, where I round up the best ones and demonstrate them within a track. So the first plugin in my chain is the Dynamic 2 plugin, and it's gonna simulate a guitar amp. So you'll hear when I turn it on, it's gonna give my guitar a more rounded, warm sound. Nice. The next plugin is EQ8. So I'm just cutting out the unnecessary low ends, some of the low mids, and that's about it. It's gonna really create this nice space for the guitar to live in within the mix. I have a compressor which is just squashing the signal and reducing the dynamic range overall so I have a nice steady volume on the guitar. And then to give it more of an ambient feel, I'm using Valhalla Supermassive, which is a great free reverb plugin that I'll link in the description below. And I'm using the preset Forward Reverb. I just tweaked it a little bit so it's not getting too crazy. I think I might have turned the delay down a bit. So the last plugin in my chain is one of the first free lo-fi plugins and it's called Isotope Vinyl. And it's so great, it's got all the stuff that you would want to create a lo-fi sound. You have mechanical noise of the record, and I'll just turn each one up so you can hear it. The wear on the record, some electrical noise, you can have dust on the record, which gives it more of like those pops and crackles and scratches. And then the warp depth is what is going to manipulate the pitch modulation, which comes from like tapes going by too fast or slow, which changes the pitch and gives it that warble. So I'm gonna turn that all the way up so you can hear it. You can hear it really going <laughs> But yeah, I like to keep it around like 30, 40% and it's not going too out of tune, just enough to kind of sit within everything else. You can change the year of the record, which is gonna change some of the characteristics overall, as well as the RPM that it's going by. So here it is within my mix. Oh, So that's it. Let me know in the comments which chord progression was your favorite. Maybe it was the first one. Maybe it was the third one. Maybe it was the second one. Who knows? Be sure, like and subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified when we come out with new videos like this one.